Nikhil, how are you today? Hi, Jitesh. I'm great. How are you? All good. And uh, so, uh, thank you so much for doing this interview. And I'm looking forward to asking you questions. And uh, you also said that you're going to show us a small walkthrough of your PowerPoint add-in tools too. And I'm really looking forward to that. So tell us more about what you do, Gil. <laughs> So my, um, in my day job, I actually work at a software company, so I do a lot of uh, demos, a lot of training, a lot of PowerPoint presentations. So um, as a uh, person who's always on the lookout for ways to improve things and do things, automate things and do things easier, quicker, faster, that's where the need for Tools 2 came out. Just awesome. awesome. So that gets us to our next question. So what motivated you to create Tools 2? So the original, original... Uh, version of Tools 2 it goes way back to uh, actually 2000, if you can believe it. Uh, at the time, um, of course, PowerPoint was what PowerPoint was back then. And we had, my, this, I'm actually the same software company I was back then, but we had a tool and it had a visual editor with, you know, with a GUI editor to lay stuff out on the screen. And it did things a certain way. In particular, it aligned things according to other shapes. And I was going, hmm, why can't we do that in PowerPoint? And so the first version of Tools 2 uh, was actually called By First Shape. Um, and what it had was just a total of six tools. You click uh, basically the align left, align middle, align right, top, center, and bottom, those six tools, all by the first shape that you click. And that was it. And I was happy with that for about a year. And then I started adding more and more tools to it. <laughs> and look where you are now. It's yeah, awesome. now. And, 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 and you know, um, Many of your tools in Tools 2 actually work with that reference shape right. and uh, built upon that. And you made it so powerful building upon the original idea. Uh, can, can you just share your screen and sh walk us through a small demo, please? Sure, sure. So let's go ahead and share screen. And there you go. You should be able to see it now. Yes. How do I call There you go. Okay. So um, here's the Tools 2. Um, ribbon and all of the tools to functionality is, exp is exposed through the ribbon the ribbon actually has several different modes uh, we call them beginner intermediate and expert just so people aren't overwhelmed when they first <laughs> install tools to and kind of can ease into it so when you start in beginner mode you have a lot fewer tools and you can ju just kind of get idea get the idea get the hang of using the tool and then as you get more comfortable with it you can add more and more capabilities intermediate adds some more and then expert of course adds the full capability um, so in expert mode, uh, we have, uh, as you mentioned, reference shape options. So we have four reference shape options. And the idea of the reference shape options is they uh, provide an anchor uh, for what uh, the tools, all the tools to the left of the reference shapes do. So if you say first shape, all the tools anchor off the first shape that you select. If you say picked up shape, they all anchor off of the shape you pick up with the pickup tool. If you say presentation space, they anchor off of uh, a special shape you define, usually in the, in the slides layout, to denote what the presentation space is. And slide, of course, is self-explanatory. So let me show this in action. So if we select these three, tool, three shapes that we have on the slide, uh, in normal PowerPoint mode, so I'll just go to uh, the normal home screen. Um, and if you do uh, arrange here, and you do align left, or actually let's do a line center, you'll notice it moved all three shapes. So just undo, redo a few times. Notice all three shapes move. And if you really wanted to align, let's say, according to this shape, that's not, having all three shapes move is not what you want to have happen. So in Tools 2, if you click this red shape first, and then control click the rest, and then use Tools 2 align center, you notice it did not move all three, it anchored its action based on the shape you clicked first. And that's what first shape does. And of course, you can do left, right, you know, whatever you wish. You can do make same. So you can make same size. Um, so any, any of the actions you do on this left side of the screen, of the, of the ribbon, are all anchored off of that first shape that you picked. So it makes it very easy, very predictable what's going to happen with the built-in PowerPoint tool. As you saw at the Align Center, you don't exactly know what you're going to get because it moves everything. So that's the idea of the first shape. Pickup shape works the same way, except let me just undo all this, except now you pick a shape and it doesn't even have to be a shape on this slide. It can be a shape on any slide, actually a shape on any slide in any presentation that's currently open. So you can pick up a shape. Let's say we pick up this one. And then just by selecting this one, selecting picked up shape, and let's say align right, 
you see it does it based on that shape that you picked up. So pretty simple. Slide, of course, is self-explanatory. Uh, if I do, let's say, distribute, it will distribute all three shapes evenly. So the space is now even. Well, actually, sorry, that didn't work right because I need to select all three. Um, it distributes all three evenly, so the space is now even. And if I center them, um, everything is distributed evenly. So you can see how easy that is. And then uh, the presentation space, that one's a little trickier to explain because that one requires, as I said, a shape that you define on the slide layout and it has to be defined a certain way. And you can look at the user guide for the exact um, specifications how to do that. But once you do that, let me move this out of the way and this out of the way. So let's select this shape. And if I do make same size, whoops. I guess I didn't shape, I didn't save the version of the slide with the layout. Oops. Um, hang on one second. I have, I think I did that actually over here. Should have worked. Well, let's see. Let's try this. So here's a version of the deck that probably does have it set up. Um, so we'll do presentation space. We'll do make same size. There we go. And then if we center it. So you can see, you didn't see that presentation space defined on the slide. It's kind of hidden on the, on the layout, but it allows you to do uh, interesting stuff because it allows you to define a space on your slide that you're using for your content, and then allows you to align stuff to that content. So if you're thinking about like a, a title layout versus an agenda layout versus a content layout, if you look at all the standard layouts, uh, you can define, if you go to your slide master, you can define for each slide master type, for each layout type, you can define a different presentation space and, and have the, the tools automatically adjust based on that. So it's pretty powerful. Um, I use it a lot. To, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just going to repeat what you said just to understand it better. Mm -hmm. So uh, just for the presentation space thing. Mm -hmm. so you, can, you can actually allot a presentation space, a specific object, shape on every slide layout within the slide master yes and uh, depending on which slide layout the active slide is using it's going to use that as the anchor that's correct that's correct Perfect. exactly right so that's that's the idea of the reference shape and then uh, let's talk a little bit about the tools so there's lots of different tools here a couple i want to highlight uh, that are very, uh, are perhaps very powerful very interesting one of my favorites is the make same rounded corner so the idea the ideas behind the tools and tools two are really uh, primarily two. They're, they're designed to do two things for you. One is a lot of the tools are designed to just be more productive. So these are things that you can do in PowerPoint pretty easily manually, but maybe they're tedious or maybe they're repetitive. And so the tools help you do things more productively. The other set of tools uh, are ones that do things that you cannot easily do manually in PowerPoint. And the make same rounded corner is perhaps the best example of that. So here we have uh, three shapes on the slide that have rounded corners, but they're all different sizes, and it doesn't look very good, right? So let's say I want to make all three the same, have the same rounded corner as this one. Now you could, of course, go into each one and start messing with the little adjuster, adjustment handle, and try to get it visually. It, it'll work, but it won't be accurate, and it'll be a little tedious. Uh, so here I can select this, select first shape, and we'll control click the other two, and then we'll just do make same rounded corner, and we're done. And it's accurate, and, it's, and, and all the shapes are exactly the same corner. So it just makes for a nice, a cleaner look. And it's a lot, it's, and you can achieve it in a single click, as you just saw. Awesome. So if, uh, if we go and save a, a rounded corner specification that we want in the presentation space, that, uh, that just that simple act makes, uh, makes it sure that we have the same rounded corner for every shape in a slide. You can, yeah, you can do it that way. I've, I've actually never done that precise, precise use, but yes, yeah, certainly you can do that. If you save, if the shape you use as the presentation space on the layout, the hidden shape you use on the layout has rounded corners, you can just do presentation space and apply that to all of the shapes on the slide. Absolutely. Awesome. That's a real, real time saver. So from the demo that you've just provided, we can see that using add-ins such as tools to, you know, can reduce the time spent on repetitive tasks. And also it allows you to go and do something exactly the way you did in a previous slide. Okay. Correct. So not, not only are you saving time repeating tasks, but you're getting the exact result rather than 
getting a little different result and you spend a fraction of the time that you would usually spend. So can you discuss more about such time savings and also the other benefits of using tools too? So I, I mean, I can't quantify it if that's what you're asking, but uh, the, the tools are there to save you a lot of time and some tools save you more, more than others, obviously. Um, so for example, the, let's look at a couple of tools and talk about how they save time. So one of my other favorite tools is over here on the uh, shape tools, we have add to group. And the problem that this tool, this particular tool tries to solve is that when you uh, have a group and you want to add another shape to it, and that group of course has a bunch of animation associated with it, when you add a, when you try to add using the standard PowerPoint, when you just add, basically create a new group with the additional shape, you lose all the animation. And it can be very tedious to go recreate it. With the add to group, all the animation is preserved. And so that's a major time savings and a major, um, it, you know, it's very precise work. Very, very, it's very delicate work in the sense that it has to be precise, getting the sequencing right, getting everything exactly right. And after group does that in a single click and it could save you, each time you use it, it could save you minutes to many minutes, just as an example. It was or recently pointed, hours. yeah, or many, or many hours. It was recently pointed out to me by one of my users that the same problem happens when you, in some cases, when you delete from a group. And that was the genesis of the new, this is the most recently added tool, the genesis of the delete from group tool. Same problem, but on the opposite direction, delete. Perfect. So you, do, so, so the, uh, you don't want to quantify it, and but in, some, in certain ways you gave us the idea that a lot of the input uh, improvements in tools too comes from feedback from users. Absolutely. Okay. So can you share a story, a story about some user feedback and how that ended up being an important feature in tools too? Sure. So, um, I, of course, I encourage all my users to uh, provide feedback and suggestions and ideas, and uh, that um, as long as it aligns with the f with the general philosophy of the tool, so as long as it's something that fits in with the reference shape model or can work in a standalone uh, as a standalone shape or slide tool uh, that fits in with kind of the rest of the tools, then I am um, happy to add it into the tool. And over the years, of course, I've added many, many tools that have come from uh, customer ideas, things that I would have never imagined uh, myself. Uh, so the select same tools are examples of that. Um, so this came from a, uh, uh, a customer email one day saying, hey, I have this, I have this uh, set of tools that was done uh, by, uh, as a private macro, we'd like to, it doesn't work anymore, can you do something about this? And so sure, I took a look at it and uh, that was the genesis of these tools. And so the way these work is you can just select um, any, sh any shape, let me just replicate that one. You can select any shape and it will select, if you do select same shape, it will select, because I'm using the first shape, it copied and said give me all the uh, rounded rectangle shapes on the slide. So imagine if you have a very complex slide, you can quickly select all of a particular shape that you want. And now let's say I want only the blue ones. You can say select same fill, and it'll just reduce that and re just leave the ones that are the same fill, and so on. So you can very quickly select just the shapes that you want, and then you can do stuff with them. You can align them, you can change their format, you know, whatever you want to do. So you can quickly select a bunch of shapes that share similar characteristics and work on them. And that thought never occurred to me before, and it was in a customer idea. I loved it, put it in, and it resulted in um, this, this option. eight more tools. Yeah. Awesome. So um, when, when I uh, discuss PowerPoint and teach people, I always say PowerPoint is all about selection and then action. Exactly. You, 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 you make selection so much easy, more intuitive, and more uh, you know, intelligent. Uh, so I think uh, that solves a, lot, a huge problem for many people. Yes. Yes, that, that that that's always so true because uh, a lot of lot of users come to you with their pain points, and uh, there will be other users with those same pain points, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, each of them will benefit from each other's uh, suggestions and benefits. Absolutely, it all makes its way into the overall tool, um, and the result is, as I said, I started in two thousand with six tools, and now and now it's about one hundred and eight, if I remember correctly. That's that's really really awesome. Yeah. So, is there a trial version of Tools 2 available? Absolutely. And, uh, and if they want to, and someone wants to buy the full version, how much does this cost? Yeah. So, um, everything's available through the website www.tools2.com, and if you go there, there is a link to download a 30-day uh, fully featured free trial version. So it's the exact same code you're seeing here. Um, just after 30 days, it will expire. 
And then if you want to purchase it, it's just a flat price of 1995 US dollars. And, uh, and the tool is yours, all the capabilities. That, that's a real steal. It is. With, with the amount of time savings, absolutely. It'll pay for itself very quickly. So this is great. Uh, this is so much fun, you know, and um, I've, I've used a lot of your tools to options and features over here, but uh, there's, clearly there's so much more, so much more to be uh, used and stuff over there. And, uh, um, and I, I think um, you, you really explained the reference shape options very well, and uh, I understand it a whole lot better now. That's, that's great. There's also a video on, on the on the on the video. Uh, sorry, on the homepage on the website on in the website. There's a video right there on the on the homepage with the, an explanation of the reference shapes. So you can you can watch that as well. It's like a three minute video. Perfect. So if all, any of the viewers want to know more about the stuff, they can get to your website. They can uh, download a trial version, buy it over there, watch mm -hmm. the videos, and uh, they can reach out to you as well. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much for doing this uh, interview today, Gil, and uh, I really enjoyed it. And uh, maybe we should catch up soon and uh, look at other features of Tool2. Sure. Thank you, Jitesh. Have a great day. You too. Explore more concepts at InDesign.com. InDesign. Make better presentations. Fast.